is working among us, actually. Do you believe the presence of the Holy Spirit? Yes or no? Amen? amen. If, you, if you believe, say amen. amen. Yeah, every, every one of you believes in it, right? Uh, when Jesus went up to his father, go back to his father, uh, finishing his ministry on the earth, right? Being crucified on the cross and resurrected on the third day and ascended into heaven. He did. Before his ascension, he promised one thing that I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit to you. So you need to pray for it. You need to pray for him. According to Gospel of Luke, and according to the book of Acts, actually, so you stay in the city of Jerusalem until you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Then you can go out to be eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. And here in John, the version of John, Jesus was teaching his disciples. He was talking about going back to his father. Then the disciples were really, really worried. Oh, what should I do without the teacher? What should I do without Jesus? We cannot do anything. Then Jesus answered, Don't worry. I'll send you another counselor or helper or advocate. Actually, my, my version is a new NIV version. Recent version is called here, translated into advocate. Actually, this advocate, the translation advocate is most accurate, I think, in terms of... Uh, uh, the situation of the Church of Mark. Because Church of Mark, they were standing in trial. They had a lot of difficulties from Jewish sector. They are pushing Christians. And Roman Empire was pushing Christian sector. Do you understand what I mean? That's why the Holy Spirit had to stand before them. The Holy Spirit need to defend them as a helper at the court. That's why the word advocate is very important. It's very, I mean, it's a properly interpreted. Anyway, many, many Christians think probably this way, oh, I believe in Jesus Christ. Also, I believe the presence of the Holy Spirit, but actually many of uh, Christians are worried about, I mean, think about the uh, Holy Spirit. Is, it, is He alive? Is He character? Or is He power? What? I'm going to ask you. What is it? What is the Holy Spirit? Is it power or character? You read uh, just now scripture. So is it power or is it character? Like God and Jesus Christ. What is it? What do you think? Power. power. Yes, that's right. Power, right? Because the, the book of Acts actually, if you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll be powerful enough to be my witnesses. Samaria, Jerusalem, Judea, all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. That's really power. That's really power. That's right. But, it is not only power, it is character too. According to Luke, according to John, the Holy Spirit is the one who is with you all the time. You understand? Jesus ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Now, what did he do is that when, uh, up chapter 2, a book of Acts, when the disciples of Jesus Christ gathered together in the upper room of Mark, one under, around 120 people, they prayed fervently. They prayed very, very hard. And then all of a sudden, like whirling wind, come down the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit. 
and then they could speak tongue, right? So from that moment, actually, they received the Holy Spirit fully, and then they became what? The witnesses of Jesus Christ, right? That's right. This is their power, but also uh, John says that he will be with you all the time. Amen. Who is he? The Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit from the Father. Okay? You have to understand. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit from the Father. Actually, so we, we say it like this. In theologically speaking, the Holy Spirit is from the Father and from the Son, Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Yes. So, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God the Father. Okay, then therefore, he is not only power, but also his character. Do you understand? He's God. He's divine. Right? So, he wants to communicate with you. Do you understand? Okay. Who's married here? Raise your hand, please. Yeah, yeah, right. Only one? I'm married. I have a beautiful wife. Some time later, yeah, I'm going to bring... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday night I'm going back, going back to Korea and then the end of this month I'm going to come back with my wife. She's in Korea now. So probably one, uh, if I come visit the earth third time, I'm going to be with my wife. What I want to say, uh, I want to talk with my wife all the time. I want to communicate with my wife. She wants to communicate with, my, with me all the time. Likewise, the Holy Spirit always wants to talk with you. You have to understand. Amen? amen. Say, everybody says, Amen. Amen. That. Okay, once again. The Holy Spirit always wants to talk with you. But how about you? Do you want to talk with the Holy Spirit? Do you want to communicate with the Holy Spirit? Yes, hallelujah. Yeah, it's good. Uh, because, you know, the Holy Spirit is uh, we we say this the Holy Spirit verse verse 17 16 17 uh, yeah verse 17 here he will be with you or another interpretation is he is with you means means literally in your inner being inside of your body or not like that <laughs> he is controlling over you do you understand He's the one who controls over you. Means he rules over you. Right? When Jesus was on the earth, he was king. He's king and he ruled over the people. He gathered all the people to the kingdom of God and reigned over the people. But now, but Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, he ascended into heaven and he's no more. He's Physical presence is not on the earth anymore, right? So that, that's why He sent His Spirit to be with you. Do you understand? That's why He always wants to talk with you. That's why He is character. But you know, so what? You may say, oh yeah, Pastor, yes, I know. The Holy Spirit is trying to under I mean Holy Spirit is ruling over us and He's with us. He's with me. Then how can I know? There's one very strong proof. One. Not only one though, but you know, He's the one that reminds you the words of Jesus Christ in your life. Have you ever experienced this? Like on the way, on the way to, on the way to work, or on the way back home, like all of a sudden, like the words of God hit upon you. Have you ever experienced? Yes or no? Yes. Then that is the work of the Holy Spirit, not yourself, because we are actually, though we believe in Jesus Christ, we have still sinful nature, right? Do you understand? I mean, sinful nature. That's why. So, in a sense, we are quite fully covered in our sinful nature. But, 
once you belong to Jesus Christ, though we have, though you have sinful nature, we also are, we are reigned. We are ruled by God, ruled by Jesus Christ. So, the Holy Spirit wants to rule over you. Okay, that's why from time to time and many times, He illuminates you. Many times, He will remind you. He reminds you the words of Jesus Christ so that you can follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That is what the Holy Spirit works in you. So nobody can deny that, oh God, the Holy Spirit never works among me. Yes, He works among me. The problem is that whenever the Holy Spirit works among you, inspires you, you don't obey. That's why the Holy, the Holy Spirit do not work among you. Do you understand? If you continue to disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not touch you. The Holy Spirit will not inspire you. You understand? For example, okay, so my wife is so far away from here, right? Kolkata from Kolkata, right? She's in Korea. So if I go on, like, right? you, you have WhatsApp, right? In Korea, we have, uh, it's called, we use called Kato, Korean WhatsApp, kind of. <laughs> if I cannot see her, if I don't use this one, no communication at all, right? Mm. How can I communicate with her, right? So, if I don't talk with her one day, two day, one week, two week, one month, two month, wow, what did happen? What did happen? Our relationship will be quite far, right? If you, the more frequently you communicate, then you will get closer and closer, right? But you, if you don't communicate with her, not with her, with you, for me. <laughs> Likewise, if you don't communicate with the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit, you know, doesn't work in you. Do you understand? That's why it's very important whenever the Holy Spirit works among you, that when, whenever the Holy Spirit touches you and illuminates you and inspires you, you need to obey. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Do you understand? Yes. It is like this. But, you know, okay, the, there is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but I have sinful desire. So, the Holy Spirit wants me to do that, but my sinful desire doesn't want. These two things are fighting. That's what actually in Romans chapter 8, all words are doing. My sinful flesh doesn't want to obey the Holy Spirit, right? Now, and in a sense also, I don't want to submit my sinful nature, right? So these two things are kind of fighting, conflict all the time. But if you are Filled with, filled with the Holy Spirit, you will obey the Word of God. You understand? Please like, I just, uh, as I enter my preaching, I told you this thing. When I was dreaming this morning, right? If the Holy Spirit inspired me to preach from each chapter, right? Why is it possible? Because I try to be intimate with Him all the time. You understand? But if you are for example, if you are intimate with YouTube, you will see YouTube in your dream. Hallelujah. <laughs> you will, right, whatever you are intimate with, you will see it in your dream. Yes or no? Have you experienced? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. But if you are close with your Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, yeah, you will even communicate in your dream. So, basically, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will lead you into the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, you have to think about this. Why did Jesus 
send me to your community. Why? Very simple reason. To preach the gospel. To say the truth of Jesus Christ. Then, the Holy Spirit is working among us. You understand? You understand? For example, that. Okay, I want to come to you, but all of you, again, no, no, Pastor Nikki, we, we reject him. No, 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 no. Then I cannot come. But then, you know, when I want to come to preach to you, to see you, wanna, to see you, right? The Holy Spirit already worked in advance. You understand? The Holy Spirit worked already previously in advance, beforehand. So that you have accept, accepting mind. Right? This is not just coincidence. This is the purpose of God. This is what God has planned already. You know. You understand? So, so for a Christian, there's no such a thing like coincidence, actually. God has planned. God has planned. You know. So, if you live with the Holy Spirit in your life, as a Christian, you can live powerful life. Have you ever experienced like, oh, I'm a Christian, but I have no spiritual power. I, 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 I do not live like Christian. I'm not like Christian. I'm not Christian. Have you ever felt that moment? Right? Even myself also many times. Many times. <laughs> but you know what happened actually, probably I'm going to show you after this. After preaching, uh, I took I took my students. I, I'm teaching at the Bible College. I took my student uh, uh, for a mission trip to Varanasi area, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, actually, we are supposed to uh, like distribute tracts and evangelizing on the street, but it was strictly prohibited in the city because also in the time of the election, right? Election is going on, and that's why we went to the village area. So, what happened is that, so, I preach it in public preach, public place. I mean, how can I, how can? Because the one police officer was Christian. That's why he organized everything. That's why we were quite safe. So what happened is that, uh, in the, in the meeting, yeah, I was preaching and we sing together. But the problem is that there are so many people who are demon possessed. Do you understand? Yeah. Have you ever seen demon possessed people? No, no. no probably not. Yeah, because you are, you are a Christian state. You can, yeah, all the power of the Holy Spirit is there all the time, right? So, <laughs> no demons, right? <laughs> but here, Uttar Pradesh, the central point of Hindu, right? Hinduism, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of demons there. Sure. Sure. In Orissa, so I have another mission field, the South Orissa, for up there also. There are people also there. So many demon possessed people. Then how? Can I? It's like, is it possible? Can I? I mean, I cast out demons in my name. Is it possible? No. 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 How? Then what? In what name? With what name? Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we can cast out demons. Yeah? So I use the name of Jesus Christ, right? When I use the name of Jesus Christ, okay, for example, okay, sorry. So if this is a demon for this guy, then okay. Not real, okay? <laughs> Holy Spirit demon guy, uh, Holy Spirit for this guy, okay? Yeah. So I use the name of Jesus Christ, then so many demons were cast out. Why? When I use the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit worked among them. And because the power of the Holy Spirit is much stronger than demons, they were cast out. You understand? Yeah. I have a picture here. I'm not only picture, a video is here. Yeah. You will see after how God worked, actually. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is really, really powerful in your world. Really, really want to communicate. The Holy Spirit wants you to be close with Him. Talk with Him all the time. Right? Go with Him. Come back home together. Go to work together. Eat lunch together. Whatever. 
So, you need to, in a sense, you need to utilize the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You need to utilize the Holy Spirit. But so many Christians even don't recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's why their life is not powerful as a Christian. I understand because I was a young man like you. Even though I was a Christian, I couldn't experience at that time the powerful life, the power of the Holy Spirit at that time. But the more I ministered, the more I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit and the character of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's casting out demons and even, you know, all the disease. The people, so many people came with disease. All, all, hallelujah, all what healed all of them, hallelujah. Why? Because we use the name of Jesus Christ. Then when I use the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit worked among them. Not only me, Pastor Tano, uh, Daman Khan, you, 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 you know, Pastor Tano, right? My co-worker and my students, Bible students, they also could cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. They could heal the disease in the name of Jesus Christ. Even you can cast out, you can heal when you truly believe in Jesus Christ and use the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Ah, probably not for me. Yes! It will work. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Really, it's for me. And also, not only power, but I, I, I'd better call this one the power of character in the Holy Spirit. What is that? Okay. You wanna, it's like, our simple nature always stimulates us, like, like, to commit sins, right? To gratify our desire, right? But when the Holy Spirit is powerfully with you, what happens? The Holy Spirit never wants. That's why you, how can I say? You are very close with the Holy Spirit. That's why for you, the voice of the Holy Spirit is much more Important than the voice of the simple nature. Oh, yeah. If you do this, please gratify you, gratify your desire. Yeah. But if you love Jesus Christ, if you love the Holy Spirit, it is much more important. I mean, the voice of the Holy Spirit. To obey the voice of the Holy Spirit is much more important. That's why you could obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Then the will of God, the will of Jesus Christ will be done through you. Amen? Amen. Then you can be Powerful Christians. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, Pastor. It's only you. It's only me. No. Jesus sent his spirit to all believers. Amen? Amen. That's why you may be able to be powerful enough with the Holy Spirit. And you should. Right? You should be powerful with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then how? Then how can we be capable? How can we be powerful with the Holy Spirit? First one. First one. Very important. Repeat after me. Repentance. 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 We have to repent our sins. That is most important. You understand? Yes. I want a very funny story, but it, it happened really in reality. There's a one pastor who was quite famous for casting out demons. He did all the time, but one day he cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, he cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. You'll be got away. You'll be thrown into fire. But the demon said. No, I'll let them out. No, let me not. Why? Because the pastor has definitely, he has sinned. That's why. You understand? First, if you want to be powerful with the Holy Spirit, you need to thoroughly repent your sins. Amen. Amen. 
So, you know, whenever, even whenever you come here for worship, first thing must be thorough repentance. Amen? You need to repent yourself first. Second thing, you need to, what? Obey the truth. Obey the Holy Spirit. Obey. And, and what I mean is practice the love of Jesus. If you do not practice the love of Jesus Christ, nothing. This is the sign. Practicing the love of Jesus Christ is the sign for what or mark of Christian. Your simple desire doesn't want to do good things, to love your brothers and sisters, but the Holy Spirit encourages you to do it. Okay? Then you need to do it. Practice. You know, is it easy for you to accept your brothers and sisters? Yes or no? Yes. yes? Wow. Much higher than me, right? High quality. Very difficult. Yes or no? Because so much different, right? Korea, you, what, what? Long, long, long name. Long name. And then Oriya, Bangla, so much different, right? It's not easy actually. That's <laughs> why. Yes or no? Yes. But if you love each other, even though we acknowledge the difference, we still accept them. Amen? Amen. This is the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Very difficult. So, if you want to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, please go against your emotion. You understand? Don't follow your emotion. If you follow emotion, you will what? You will spoil your life. Our emotion, so changeable. Yes or no? Ladies, yes or no? Yes. 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 <laughs> I love this guy today. Tomorrow, no! <laughs> my good friend for next day no, she's my enemy right <laughs> not only girls boys also right <laughs> you want to be you want to be faithful to your emotion no faithful to the voice of the holy spirit amen yeah. really and then just okay this is i think very very important i think most important just have to believe that the Holy Spirit is with you. Amen? But I'm not sure though, probably if you truthfully, if you haven't truthfully accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you are, Holy Spirit is not yet with you. Okay? But once you truthfully, right, even now, today, this moment, if you truthfully Believe Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. The Holy Spirit is with you. Amen? Okay, raise your hand. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you truly accept that Jesus is the, your personal Savior?